Hi there everyone and welcome back to the channel. So I hope you're getting some imaging time done. Unfortunately, I'm not having any luck. So the weather here in Cyprus is hot and humid, so uh, it just tends to be washing out the sky uh, completely at night. And here we are in Home Assistant and you can see at the moment, which uh, it's two o'clock in the afternoon roughly, and the humidity is sitting at 69% and the temperature is 32 and a half degrees C outside. And if we look last night we can see the temp the humidity pretty much for the whole night was around the 94 95 percent mark and if we look at the history over the last week let's choose through the last week we can see all night 90 percent where a couple of nights where it was down to 80 and then again 90 percent 90% and then last night 95% and the temperature at night isn't really dropping much below 25 degrees C and that's right about uh, the daylight starts again so it just steadily declines through the night but never really drops below 25 degrees so we're not being too great for imaging I did try and go out a couple of nights ago with the Edge 11 I did set it up and did uh, some balancing and focusing and playing around and just popping around the sky, but it was pretty much hopeless, so I gave up and went back and watched the telly. So what have I been doing instead? I went back and had a look and tidied up some of the, my files and my images and various captures and things, and I went back and had a look at a test capture I was doing back in uh, June, it was, of the Crescent Nebula area. Uh, so if we pop across to Pixinsight, here we can see here, we've got the Crescent Nebula in the, in the middle of the picture. And this was just a five minute exposure. There's no calibration frames or anything used in this, and you can still see all the hot pixels in the images. But this, what you can see on the screen, only forms a small section of the overall image, which was a 12 panel test using the RASA 11 inch and the ASI 2600 uh, one-shot color camera. So if I zoom out, we can see the whole image after I've cropped down the edges and things. It was uh, stacked e the 12 five-minute uh, panels uh, using the APP. And the total image here is 15,917 pixels wide by 13,860 pixels tall. So one of the things that I tend to do with my images is I'll zoom right in on them and I'll just be having a look around, just scroll the mouse left and right and up and down and just seeing what aberrations are there, what galaxies are hitting in the background, various things like that. And then I'll just mark them using the preview tool and then I can go back and have a look and see what's maybe causing these issues uh, and things like that. So down the left hand side of Pixinsight here you can see I've got uh, eight previews marked and this is when I just I discovered I noticed a couple of uh, very tiny uh, what appeared to be planetary nebula buried in the images and I wanted to find out what they were. So if we take a look at the, each of these previews, the first one here, preview number one, you can see this small planetary nebula looking area and if you think this is zoomed right in, so if we go back to the main image and find preview one, which is down at the bottom here, you can see, you can just barely see the fuzziness. And if I zoom in, you start to see it becoming apparent. So I don't know how many pixels wide that is, but it's not very big at all. And not just slightly bigger than a star on the image. So yeah, there's planetary nebula. And then the second thing I noticed on the image was this double ring. Now I think this is some sort of reflection or there's been a dew drop or something like that or a bit of dirt on the, the optics and it's caused this because I also found it again somewhere else in the image. You can see here and potentially a third time in preview number two, I think it was, no. Preview number four, there's something going on here and possibly up here. So I'm not too sure if that relates to it or not. Maybe need to go back to that area and do some further tests. So the other thing was this planetary nebula here, which is in my preview number five. Again, a very small 
a tiny little planetary nebula, or I suspected a planetary nebula. You can just see it buried here in the image, up to the top left. And then the other things that I picked up was this ring formation. I thought maybe it was another planetary nebula, but extremely far away. So I wanted to investigate that further and see if there was a named object in that area. And then I had a couple of other regions that I want to go back and revisit. So this big nebula cloud area, uh, I don't know if it forms part of a larger part in that uh, overall image, but you can see it up here in the top right, uh, to the top right of the Crescent Nebula, uh, sitting up here. So I don't know if it's uh, a larger uh, region of something that it's up there. And then lastly, down at preview number eight, I noticed this bluish area. Again, it's maybe some sort of aberration on the image, but maybe another region that I need to go back and revisit. But the ones I wanted to take a check and identify were these very distinct uh, areas. So preview number one, preview number five, and uh, this ring in preview number six. So to do that, there's a couple of tools that I use is the Aladdin Lite website and the Aladdin uh, desktop software. So that's what we'll do today. So in this image in Pixinsight, I did an image solver on it just to get all the coordinates. And if we click, click on any of the objects, so for example, we go down to the planet uh, the preview number one and I click on the center of the planetary nebula, you can see it gives us the right ascension and declination coordinates for that pixel. And we can take that information, take a note of it, and then use that in the Aladdin tools to try and identify what that object is. So I've taken a note of these on my stickies. So here we can see my sticky notes of the various uh, previews that I wanted to look at. So I'll move that off to the side. And if we go across now to the Aladdin software or the website, here we are in Aladdin Lite. And you can see on the left hand side is the various uh, straw astronomical surveys. So the current one is selected as the DSS2 collection. And on the right hand side, you can see we've got a couple of uh, catalog options that we can select. So when you collect, for example, Simbad, you'll see all these green dots appear, which are named objects in the image or identified objects in the image. So what we can do now is we can enter the name, for example, if I put in the Crescent Nebula, you have typed it previously, it'll take us to that region of space and you can see all the various items that are picked up or all the objects highlighted by the Simbi catalog, or we can type in the coordinates. So if we take my first planetary nebula and type in 2019-58-38-2402, uh, and hit enter, it's taken us right to that planetary nebula in the center of the screen. And if I scroll my mouse wheel in, there it is there, and if we click on the round circle, which is the object, we can see it's planetary nebula A6669. And we can also then use this target up in the top left, watch this, click an object to identify it. And it'll also give you uh, another pop-up window where you can click and it'll take you off to the Simbag catalog and give you more details about that object and other known names and things like that for it. And depending on the object, it gives you all sorts of other astronomical data about the object. And as I said, on the left hand side, we have got the other catalogs. So for example, if I switch the catalog across to the DSS2 blue, you'll see the image change to what the blue channel looks like for that region. And yet we can see there's the planetary nebula and there's a few other bits of blue around the area. So there's maybe just something slightly larger on that. So one thing, unfortunately, with the Aladdin website software, you don't know if the surveys are included in the, uh, the target that you've identified. Uh, so obviously, if I click on something 
if I click the VTS SHA, it's not coming up with anything for that region. But if I zoom out, you can see that survey is further up and you can see the area. So it's not captured by this particular planetary nebula target. So if we go back to DSS2, there we can see that planetary nebula there again. So this is where I can use the desktop version of the software, which you can download off the website. So if I just take off Aladdin Light off the back end of the address, and you'll see Aladdin Desktop, and you can download the latest version for your machine. So on my PC, let me just close this browser, and I got the Aladdin software open here. And it was pretty much the same idea. You got the catalogs and the collections down the left hand side. So now I can enter the coordinates for that object again. So 201958 uh, 382 and hit enter. And here it's loaded up the image and it's defaulted to the DSS2 color collection. Is color survey data, sorry, because it tells you that on the bottom right here. It gives you the name of the catalogue, which you can turn on and off if you've got multiple uh, survey data or catalogues or collections, whatever you want to call them, open. So on the left-hand side, in the tree, uh, the tree view, you can see all the uh, collections, and you can see some are orange and green. So if I open up these various trees, you can see all the various image collections, etc. So if I take up the image, optical, and here we can see the DSS, wherever it's gone. Oh, there we go, can't see it for looking. And we've got DSS color, DSS blue, DSS red. So I can actually click on one of these and it'll tell you on the right hand side of the pop up the what the scope of the collection is. So here we can see it's running in the 468 nanometer to the 491 nanometer bandwidth and it's got a resolution of 805 milli arc seconds. So I can load this into DSS Lite and you can see that appears down at the bottom right hand side. DSS2 slash blue is now the active collection and I can toggle between them by flicking uh, the checkbox uh, next to them. And the ones that are in orange are out with the scope, or sorry, the, your target is not within scope of those collections, so they don't appear uh, green. So you can see quickly where you can look within the collections relative to your target. So now that we've got our uh, coordinates for that object typed in, we can pull up the catalog. So for example, if I turn on the database Sinbad, Again, we can double click that. If I single click it, it gives you the details of the uh, object, eh, sorry, the collection. So here we can see it's got the tip for in view. And on the right hand side, now that I've loaded it, you can see it's active and it's giving the red box on the object. And now if I can click that object down at the bottom there, it'll pull the data from the Simba database about that object. And if I click it, Again, it takes us off to the Simbag website with details of that object. So if I go back to the view in DSS Lite, that was the first target. So let's have a look at the second planetary nebula, 2004, 16, 39, 35, 32. And there it is, you can see it appeared on the screen. So again, we're in the DSS color collection and we've got the planetary number, and you can do exactly the same thing. You can click the target, it'll pull up the database information down at the bottom of the screen, and we can head off to the Simbad website and get the details about that object. In this case, it is Planetary Nebula by the designation PN, and it's identified as G075.6 plus 04.3. And it's also got the designation ARO342. So, yep, you can get more information about the object.
But what we can also do on the desktop version of the software is on the right hand side we've got these tools and we can actually measure the size of the object approximately. So if I take distance, I click on distance, I can now draw a line across the screen and it's telling me there that the object is approximately 29.98, sorry, 28.98 seconds in diameter and it's 26.08 seconds tall. So a tiny little object in the grand scheme of things compared to the overall image. So the last one I wanted to have a look at was the, the other suspected planetary nebula, which was 200828 by 40, 19, 16. And this one actually turned out to be not a planetary nebula, but a double ring of stars. So here we can see, if I go back to my Pixinsight image for that preview. So here's the preview. If I zoom right in, we've got these five outer stars and then the ring in the middle. And if we go across to DSS desktop software, there we can see the one, two, three, four, five outer stars with this inner ring of stars. So it turns out that that wasn't a planetary nebula, but was a double ring of stars in my image. So there you have it. That is how we can find targets in your image. And you can also use the distance tools. And that's probably just scraping the surface of what's capable with the Aladdin software but it's a starting point that you can go and explore some of your own data yourselves. So on that note, I'm gonna go back and dig around some more of my other images and uh, we'll leave it there for the time being. And I'm gonna hope this humidity dies off so I can potentially get imaging because the skies have been relatively clear other than that but it's just very hot, very humid, the sky's washed out, we've got no moon until later in the morning, and uh, yeah, it seems a bit of a waste not being able to do much, never mind. All right, thanks for watching everybody, take care of yourselves, clear skies, and we'll catch you in the next one.